This question says, if marginal utility is negative, total utility is positive, negative, decreasing, constant, or increasing. And so we know that marginal utility is the, uh, how, much addition, how many additional units of utility do you get? Or what is a change in utility um, that happens when you consume one additional unit of a good? And we also know it's the first derivative of the total utility function. And so if marginal utility is negative, that tells us that um, this last unit of the, or this next unit that we would, we would consume of a good is going to actually decrease how, our overall total utility. I Meaning we really don't want any more of this good. We've already, we've consumed more than enough of this good for us to be happy and for us to be optimal. And so uh, let's take a look at the answers. So A says positive. Uh, if marginal utility is negative, total utility is positive. And again, that's not, that might not be the case. Maybe you've consumed so much of this good, so far over optimal, that you've actually managed to uh, make total utility negative. Better off, you would have been better off not eating, uh, not consuming this good at all. Um, so positive is is not necessarily going to be true. B says negative, and again, it is not necessarily the case that uh, your total utility needs to be negative as well. It's possible that you are just one unit over optimal, and so your marginal utility of this next unit is, is negative, but for everything else, it was positive, which would have meant your total utility overall would have been positive. And so it's not necessarily the case that B is true either, that total utility is negative when marginal utility is negative. So that's not necessarily the answer. C says decreasing. And so again, this goes back to this idea that the marginal utility function is a derivative, first derivative of the total utility function. And in that sense, we know that if, if the first derivative is negative, then yeah, total utility must be decreasing because marginal utility is, uh, is, our, is, our, is our derivative. And so decreasing seems to be a really good answer for what we're looking for here. D says constant. And again, we would not expect uh, total utility to be constant if marginal utility is negative. We would expect uh, marg uh, total utility to be decreasing. And same answer for E. Uh, there's no way if marginal utility is negative that total utility could be increasing. Again, going back to that first derivative relationship between these two functions. And so we're gonna go C. If marginal utility is negative, then total utility is decreasing. And so we see if C, uh, the previous tutor also picked C, uh, decreasing as the marginal utility decreases, the total utility will also decrease, which is great. So the next question says, the substitution effect always increases quantity, uh, sorry, the substitution effect A, always increases quantity demanded of a good whose relative price has fallen, B is opposite in sign to the income effect for all normal goods. C is opposite in sign to the income effect for all normal goods. D may cause demand curves to be upward sloping. Or E is always dominated by the income effect for normal goods. And so a lot of these answer choices are talking about two things. They're talking about the substitution effect. And they're talking about the income effect. And so what that really goes back to is two reasons why our demand curve is downward sloping. And those two reasons are the substitution effect and the income effect. Why is the law of demand true? When price goes up, why does quantity of demand go down? And the first explanation that we get for this is the substitution effect. If the price goes up for a good, um, people are going to be likely to um, switch from purchasing this good, good X, let's say, because the price is now higher, they would be more likely to, to reduce their consumption of good X in favor of the substitute for good X, which would be good Y. And so that substitution effect is part of a reason why quantity of the demanded is going to go down when price goes up, simply because people are pivoting towards substitute goods. And that's the substitution effect. The second reason we can give for why the price, uh, when price goes up, quantity of the demanded goes down is because of the income effect. And the income effect says that when price goes up, uh, what essentially happens is you reduce the purchasing power of the consumer. Because whereas uh, a consumer at the previous price may have been able to buy 10 units of a good if they spent all of their income on it, by increasing the price, you may have reduced their ability to buy this good to only five units of this good, even if they spent all the same amount of money on these goods. And so you, even though this person's income has stayed the same, their effective income or their uh, purchasing power has actually declined due to the increase in price. And so that decline in purchasing power means 
even if the person wanted to, to consume as much as they did before, they might not be able to or are less able to because of that reduction of purchasing power. And so that's uh, the income effect explanation for why the uh, quantities demanded of a good is going to go down when, when income goes up. Sorry, when price goes up. And so let's take a look at which one of these answer choices is going to get some of these uh, definitions and relationships between these two concepts correct. So C says, A says, the substitution effect always increases quantity demanded of a good whose relative price has fallen. And so uh, what it's saying is uh, the substitution effect always increases the quantity demanded of a good. So the quantity demand is going up when the relative price has fallen for, uh, for a substitute good. So um, this is not going to be correct, right? If, when we say that when, when relative price has fallen, if we assume that relative price assumes to the, the price of the substitute good, then if the substitute good's price falls, we would expect the substitute good to experience an increase in quantity demand, while our good would uh, experience a decrease in quantity demand as people pivoted towards the substitute good. So A is going to get the direction of the relationship incorrect. B says that the substitution effect is opposite in sign to the income effect for all normal goods. And that's not going to be true. We, we know that uh, yeah, we know that uh, these two goods um, share a, a direction uh, in, in terms of uh, of both of them are, are, are allowing are explaining why the law of demand is correct. And so um, it's not going to be the case that they have opposite signs in effect. They both have, they both are similar explanations and they're both reasons why the law of demand holds true. And so we would expect them to have the same sign in effect. So it's not going to be B. It looks like C is the same answer choice. So we're just going to say it's not C as well. D says uh, the substitution effect may cause the main curves to be upward sloping. And so uh, that's not going to be the case. Um, we, we, we know that the main curve is always uh, downward sloping, and so that's not a reason for uh, the substitution effect to be uh, at play. And finally, E says that the substitution effect is always dominated by the income effect for normal goods. And again, we don't know if that's the case. It depends on the good at hand. So um, I see we've, so it looks like we've eliminated all our answer choices, but um, on a reread, I think answer choice A actually might be a better uh, answer choice than I had previously assessed, and that's because uh, it's also poss possible to interpret relative price has fallen as saying that the price of our, our good has fallen relative to the substitute goods price. In that case, if the price of our good is the one that has fallen, then people will pivot away from the substitute good in favor of our good, and that would increase the quantity demanded of a good. So it looks like that might be the best answer here. And so let's take a look at the answer key to see what the previous tutor said. So previous tutor said, uh, a as well, because of the substitution effect, if the price falls, the quantity demanded increases. And so that's a good um, answer choice there as well. Okay, great. And so let's take a look at the next question. The next question says, demand curves for normal goods slow downward because A, the substitution effect of a price change is greater than the income effect. B, e, substitution, excuse me, substitution and income effects work in the same direction. C, the income effect is always greater than the substitution effect. D, the income effect is always less than the substitution effect. Or E, none of the above. And so this again builds off the explanations we talked about prior um, about this, uh, the difference between substitution effect and income effect. Both are reasons why we would see there um, would be a downward sloping demand curve and uh, Substitution effect says that if price goes up, then people pivot away from our good to buy the substitute good. And income effect says that by increasing prices, you decrease the purchasing power of consumers, and therefore consumers are going to purchase less of the good. And so both, we see that both of those effects work in the same direction and explaining why there's an inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded. And so it looks like B is going to be our best answer. It says that demand curves for normal goods slope downward because substitution and income effects work in the same direction. And so that's going to be our best answer choice. Let's take a look at the previous tutor's answers. The previous tutor says B as well. Substitution and income effects work in the same direction. 
Uh, in other words, as the price of the good increases, the demand will fall because people will substitute to other goods as they are feeling poorer. And so uh, that matches very well with what we were talking about. And we can go to question number five. The idea that a consumer derives less additional satisfaction from consuming successive units of a good is called A, diminishing consumer surplus, B, the paradox of value, C, diminishing marginal utility, D, diminishing total value of consumption, or E, diminishing total utility. And so uh, there's two parts to this. The first is the idea that you derive less from consuming additional units of a thing. That's uh, usually something, uh, it's usually the concept called a diminishing blank or blank. Um, and so we're looking for a question that starts with uh, an answer choice that starts with the word diminishing. And then the second question is what exactly is going down over uh, continuing uh, consumption? And so for us in this question, it's additional satisfaction. In that case, we know we're talking about marginal utility. And so uh, putting that, those two ideas together, we know that uh, the idea that a consumer derives less additional satisfaction from consuming successive units of a good is called C, diminishing marginal utility. And that's what we're going to go with as our final answer. And so the previous tutor also said C is called diminishing marginal utility. And that is uh, meant for that definition. So great answers. And um, we can move on to the next question.